Hello there, and welcome to the Harry Potter themed snitch drawing tutorial. My name is Doris Venter of Library Arts, and I'm thrilled to be with you here tonight, or today, whatever the instance is. Anyway, we're going to draw that iconic flying sphere, the golden snitch. Now I have a drawing here that I've created in advance. I'm gonna walk you through how to create one of these today. We'll talk about how you can then cut it out and mount it on a new sheet of paper if you want. And now I'm just gonna go over the materials you're gonna need. If possible, if you have a glass or a cup that you can trace as a circle for your snitch, that would be great. Pencil, regular pencil and eraser are great. If you have colored pencils, these will be wonderful. And you're really gonna want colored pencils that are in the yellow, orange, maybe a little bit of red tone to color in your snitch. Okay, a pair of scissors will be great if you plan to cut out the snitch and mount it on a separate sheet of paper. I like to use a dark sheet of paper because it makes the snitch pop out because of the lightness as opposed to the dark. So you could have a dark blue, um, or if you don't have a dark sheet of paper, that's okay, just leave it on the white paper. Also, if you wanna add a few fun details, some little mini gems to show off your snitch, and finally, a piece of cardboard to give your snitch some support when you cut it out, and a glue stick to glue it on. So why don't we get started on drawing your golden snitch. I think you're gonna have a lot of fun. Okay, welcome to the golden snitch drawing tutorial again. So right here in front of me, I have the finished golden snitch, and you'll notice that it has been glued onto a separate sheet of paper with black to make the snitch really pop out. Now this snitch, I actually went ahead and bent the wings just to make it look like it's a little bit more in flight, and I did add a couple gems at the very end of the drawing. Now, if you plan to do something like this from the very start, what I recommend you do is to glue your white sheet of paper that you're gonna draw on for your golden snitch onto a thin sheet of cardboard. This is just shirt cardboard. You could use the front of a cereal box. Uh, just rip off the front of the cereal box and you could glue your paper to the inside, the brown side. Nobody will even know that there's a cereal box image underneath your golden snitch. And that would allow you to have that opportunity to cut up, cut out the snitch and have its wings go up. The background on this black paper was done with oil pastel, but you could use chalk, you could use crayon. So let's get started with the assumption that you're maybe going to want that snitch to fit onto cardboard. So if you see right here, this is plenty. This is not even a full sheet of cardboard. This measures about eight by six. So it's not even a very big sheet of cardboard, but it'll be enough to fit your snitch on. So what we would do is you would take your sheet of paper, which is just regular copy paper, take a glue stick, rub that glue stick all over the cardboard. And that is just so you can secure your paper onto that cardboard before you even start to draw. That way, when you're done with your golden snitch, you can cut it right out. It's already attached to a piece of cardboard and you are all set. Now what I'm gonna do is just cut away the extra paper. Now, if you don't want to bother with cutting out your snitch, you just wanna keep it on the white paper, that is perfectly fine. But now I have my cardboard, I have my paper ready to go, and I am ready to start my snitch drawing. So you should have in front of you for the first step, as I said, a glass, mm -hmm. a pencil, and this glass is not very big. It measures about two and a half inches in diameter. So it can be larger than that. It could be smaller. 
and it will act as a way to build your snitch. You wanna get that nice circle tracing to start. And notice where I've put the glass, right here in the bottom corner, because you wanna leave a lot of room for your wings on your snitch to come out. So I'm gonna hold that glass right here in the corner of my paper, I'm gonna press down on it, and I'm going to trace around it with my pencil, just like that. And that is going to be the beginning of your snitch drawing. If you get a little wiggly line, anything like that, you can just erase it. As I like to keep a separate eraser nearby, but you can do whatever you need to do, whatever you're comfortable with. Now, what I like to do next is to add what I would consider to be, it's like the little eyes. These two little gems are almost like little eyes on the snitch. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little circle here and a little circle on the edge of the sphere. Because the snitch is a three-dimensional form, that's why I'm calling it a sphere. Now, remember the nice thing about this tutorial is that you can stop it, slow it down whenever you want, okay? The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build a little line bridging the two eyes, like it's a little valley that connects the two together, like this. Okay, now from this circle, we're actually gonna do another valley that goes to the side. It's almost like a J shape. It's gonna go right over to the side. Now in the middle here, we're gonna create a diamond shape, but that diamond shape is gonna be created by making more of these types of lines. So right here in the middle, we're going to start here and we're gonna curve our way out in a swoop. Now we're gonna go and echo that line. Now we're gonna do the same thing, only we're gonna swoop all the way over to the side here. So we're gonna come out, swoop over, and echo that line and swoop over, just like that. Now, next we're gonna come in from these two curves mm -hmm and form the rest of the diamond. So the way we're gonna do that, we're gonna come in, around, down, with a kind of a little bit of a U-turn there, and we're gonna echo that line, come around and down, and then you see how this is beginning to form a diamond shape? We're going to do it again over here, come around, down, echo that line, and now you can see the diamond shape right there in the middle. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to build some wings. So I'm going to put, I'm gonna look right here where that point is and go right about up there. That's gonna be the start of my wing shape. It's gonna come up to the top of my cardboard, which again is not very big, and then it's gonna curve down right near the eye. Now I'm gonna echo that shape just by drawing a skinny little line like that. Now, we're gonna draw the other line for the other wing. It's gonna actually go through the sphere and we're gonna erase a little bit of this line afterwards, but let's just get our lines in first. It comes out, around, and stops at the same height as the other wing. You wanna make sure it start, stops at the same height, that they both end right here. Now we're gonna echo that wing. Oh, it's not gonna be quite like this. It's gonna go out a little wider, then it's gonna come in narrower, and then it's gonna go back to that eye. Now you see that line I just talked about a moment ago? Now we're gonna take away that line because basically we have overlapping happening here. So we don't want to see that line anymore. In fact, what we wanna do is we're gonna put some lines to add some uh, texture in the wings. But first, we're going to do the same thing we did here. We're just going to add um, a little bit of a um, echo on the inside of the wing here, all the way back. 
And now we're gonna add some line patterns to give some details to the wing. This is really not that complicated of a drawing to create. The work really goes into the coloring. So let's start with just a short line pattern along this wing edge here. And now we're gonna go next to that short line pattern. We're gonna make some longer lines. Also just kind of going out to the edge, curving ever so slightly to the edge of the wing like this. Now we're gonna do something similar on this side, but we're just gonna do the one line pattern, kind of curving, going a little bit diagonal as it goes down all the way to the sphere. Okay, you have basically just drawn your snitch. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start adding color. Now, if you look at the original snitch I have, the colors that I use were a combination of yellows, oranges. You can see these two colors are in here. I'm gonna bring a brighter yellow in. I like to bring a little bit of red. You'll see how I use it in the corners like that to suggest some shadow. And I also like to bring in a, maybe even a slighter darker red and perhaps, you never know, a darker orange and maybe a little bit of a brown. I just like to have these available and then if I you know, change my mind and use something different, I can, but I'd like to have a range of yellows, oranges, and maybe a little bit of brown. So we're gonna put that aside now. And we're going to start by coloring in our sphere. So I'm going to tilt my my uh, um, my sphere here, so I can start uh, shading in the snitch. And I'm just going to use a really pretty light yellow. Now, what I like about using um, color pencils is that you can build them up. Now, I understand everybody's in a different situation. Maybe you don't have color pencils. Maybe what you have are markers. That's absolutely fine. Markers are perfect for this project. There is no need to feel like, oh, I don't have the supplies, I can't do it. Markers are great. Crayons can work. And you know, if you really wanna be bold, if you really wanna get that gold look, you could use metallic markers if you have them. I like color pencils because you can control the value, the darkness or lightness of the color just by building in layers. And you see, I'm just putting sort of a lightish layer of yellow here. And I'm going over to here, here, over here. And there's my base color. I like to think of that as a base color because what I really like to do is come back and start building maybe, you know, this beautiful golden color on top that has a slightly orange finish. But again, I'm keeping my pencil pressure, the amount of force I'm putting on the color pencil light. The, the harder you press, the darker the color is going to be. And if that's what you want, that's fine. But you really want to kind of think about where you want that heavier line. I'm thinking that I really want to accent some of the edges, like where the wing seems to overlap and touch the sphere a little bit. Over here too, where that wing is kind of coming in, creating a little bit of shadow. Then I might come in with just a little darker color like this brown, maybe maybe this reddish brown I like better. Yeah, I like the red with a little bit of brown. Again, it just creates that feeling of a little bit of shadow without too much. And color pencils are wonderful for building up color. Okay. So let's turn our attention down here. Again, I'm just going to bring a little bit of this red to kind of create a little bit of shadowiness in the crevices of the diamond. Very lightly I'm building it up because then I can come back with that golden yellow and sort of 
blend them together more. A little bit of red. And there you go. Come back and do the same over here. Putting a little bit more of that golden color in there in each section. This. Aha, and I just remembered one little element I left off. So we're gonna come in here with our pencil really quick and we're just gonna add some lines. Uh, right here, right here, and right here. Okay, so come over here now, here, here, and with that golden color. Now, put it over here, a little bit of that red, a little bit of that red, a little bit of that orange. Again, just using that orange and red to give a little bit more attention to where I feel like I want to show a little more shadowiness. Go in here with the golden yellow again. There we go. I'm feeling like it's more finished now. I'm gonna also go in here on the little trim, these little lines that we started with. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of orange again to pick up the kind of shadowy feel. All right, like this, like this, like this. Get in there with some golden orange. Because again, this is sort of like a, a, a golden touch on top of the sphere. I'm working much faster, by the way, than I normally would, just because of the time constraints of the video and making sure that I get through this quickly, but yet still with enough detail. So over here. So you basically have the sphere done at this point. You could go back and add a little bit more shadowiness. Oh, God. Okay, right here. Okay, we're gonna take the orange over here and we're gonna make these tips all orange to really make them pop out against the pretty yellow. And don't worry if you go out of the edges because you know we're going to be cutting this out. If you're not cutting it out, you're gonna to wanna to be a little bit more careful. So. Here I'm gonna go, since I'm cutting mine out, I'm gonna go quickly and I'm not gonna worry too much about that. You could make the wings more silvery if you want. I like the goldness because in the original snitch, it is more of a silvery wing, but I like this gold yellow against the black paper. So that's why I'm doing that. So again, here is my golden yellow. Okay. Now we're gonna to just touch up these lines and you almost get a little bit of that gray silvery feeling with the pencil, the graphite pencil. And all I'm doing is running a little orange over the lines to make them pop against the yellow. Gonna do the same thing over here, a little orange. If you again, you wanna bring a little bit of red or brown in there, you can do that. Okay, there is our snitch. Again, if you wanna go in here with marker, like, a, like I sometimes like to go in with a thin marker and just sort of pull out the lines. Maybe I'll just do that for these little rounded lines 
on the spear, but I'm not going to do, and, and maybe these lines right here too. Two, three. I'm going to do a couple more here just to kind of make them a little bit bold. And I'll come over here just a little bit to give it a little tension to detail. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut my snitch shape out. Okay, coming in. Notice how I'm doing the outer parts first. I'm waiting on doing the inner wings. But this is why we did the cardboard first. Again, that's optional if you want to, to do that. It just gives that illusion that maybe your snitch is kind of flying through the air, but I would not, you could even do it without the cardboard. The cardboard just gives it a little bit of support, making it a tiny bit easier for you to position it. Now, another thing you can look for is like right here, I said, oh, you know, maybe, oh, my paper's coming up a little bit. I might need a little extra glue stick there to hold it down. Ta-da, done. It's coming up just a little bit over here. A little extra glue stick. And I'll check just a tad over here too, it looks like. That's easy enough to fix. Okay. I told you that I had a couple little gems that we could add on here, which gives it a nice effect. So you're just going to need a little drop of glue and a couple of gems. So I have just some simple craft glue here, nothing fancy. And I'm going to put a few gems on a tray over here, and then I can pick out what I want. So I'm put a dot of glue here, dot of glue there, and Pick out, here's one gem I like, right there. I'm gonna find another gem. Oh, here's one, looks very similar. And I'm gonna put that right there. Now this is a clear glue, so I'm not worried. You can then bend the wings slightly, again, to make it look like it's in flight so that the, the um, snitch is lifting off the table. So I'm gonna put that aside. Now I have some black paper here. I'm gonna put my gems aside. And what I can do is simply get some crayons, crayons, oil pastels. Either one is great for this kind of project. I just happen to like oil pastels. You can even use the color pencils to do this. And I'm just going to give it some bold lines as if it's flying through the air. Maybe I'll give it a little, even if you have chalk pastel, that could work great too. So don't feel like, oh my goodness, I don't have what she has. Everybody is working with what they have these days. And that is critical to be able to think that you have options. So I'm just going to put this here. Maybe it's just flying through the air like that. I'm going to add a little bit of glue. So I can put that down right there. Press, and there you go. You now have a flying snitch that is ready for display. I hope you enjoyed this program. I hope that I can join you again soon in the future. This is Doris Benter of Library Arts. Have fun and enjoy the project.